How are we doing folks? Well, the time is upon us to put a finish to this uh, engine conversion. Um, we're getting fairly close to the end now at this stage anyway. But uh, tomorrow morning I want to drive this van into work. So uh, the final piece of the puzzle really before I can actually drive it any distance is to replace that overrun pulley. Now if you go back through my previous videos you'll see why I actually had to do that. The This is the old pulley here which is a solid alternator pulley and um, doesn't have an overrun clutch in it. And this here is the new part. Um, so obviously it looks different because it has a clutch in it but if you look side on you'll see they're basically the same. Uh, they're the same diameter, the same flange depth and um, the difference being here is that this has a, um, a thread inside it and a splined effort. Now why they couldn't have just put a hex on the outside so you could just use a normal impact going on it I don't know. So it meant that not only did I have to buy this um, this uh, clutch pulley I also had to buy uh, a tool to put it on and um, because I've never done this job before so I had to get a tool which is annoying to be honest with you but there you go VW slash Bosch and their infinite wisdom um, but uh, anyway uh, let's, uh, let's get it fitted I'll show you the tool now in a second as well so uh, this is the tool here and basically that just literally slots into there <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, this would be typical now if it didn't fit and it was like there was an extra spline or something like that. But no, it fits. So that goes on there. And then, literally, all it's a case of doing is now I, I may need to get something just to hold the alternator, stop it from turning. Well, maybe not, we might get away with it. That's going on now. Look at that. Okay. So we need to send a few ugga duggas its way and get that tightened on and um, then uh, we will be uh, good to go and I'll fit the belt then. There we have it. It's on and it's tight. So uh, I didn't stitch it. I mean I just gave it a few rattles and it's fine now. Um, so that's not going anywhere. So now uh, now it's just a case of getting the belt on. What I do to put the belt on is I actually just grab the uh, tensioner with the channel locks just there and I pull the tensioner back and slip the belt on and let go of the tensioner. Seems to work. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it but uh, I uh, don't really know what it is and it do, the way I do it at least I'm not kind of levering on the uh, plastic pulley and uh, potentially doing damage there. I think it's just a safer way, um, the, way I, uh, the way I do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're pretty much finished here. So all that's left now to do is to take it for a um, take it for a decent drive. Yeah, there's a little bit of tidying up to do here and there, but nothing of any great consequence. Um, I have the timing belt cover on now. The overrun pulley's on with the belt. The um, water uh, the water bottles on. Um, um, like things like details, I, I'm going to replace that hose when I get a piece of hose for it. Um, I have to do something tidier with the uh, uh, gearbox oil catch bottle there. Um, I'll get something a little bit more, well, a little bit tidier that kind of fits up beside the uh, fuel filter up there. Um, but uh, basically, it's all there. Um, the engine management light over here, um, and uh, the OBD port. ECU is tucked away in there. There's the air, air filter in there. Um, and then we've our throttle position sensor with the uh, added return spring on it that I put on because um, I felt I needed it. Um, extended throttle position sensor wiring. Um, also seems to be working all right. Um, yeah, I'm really happy now. I'm, I'll be happier now when I when I've actually made it in and out of work safely tomorrow and uh, without incident but uh, let's just say I'm cautiously optimistic anyway let's uh, let's get it started and see how it runs okay let's uh, let's take it for a spin I did already start it and the uh, overrun pulley sorted out the problem so sounds pretty good so I'm going to take it out in the open road I need to go up to uh, there's a, a specific journey I need to make, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it off up the road. At least I'll be a little bit more confident about how it's going to perform tomorrow morning when, I, uh, when I'm bringing it into work. And I'll do a little bit more of a video on it then. So. But turbo just sounds gorgeous. 
got a great uh, there's, a, there's a nice bit of boost there it really uh, it really pushes on really well you can't say it pulls because the engines in the back speeds it's still got enough pull to to get the van moving again now I am laboring the engine but it was an exercise I wanted to try like really you want to be over kind of a 80k for you to be kind of using fifth but like there's sort of a 60k now and it's um yeah I'm really happy with that now It's all warmed up. It's fair to say there is nothing wrong with that engine. See, look, the belt is uh, tracking along lovely there now. That's the way it should be. And uh, engine management light isn't on. Well, hard to tell on the camera, but it's not. And uh, yeah, it pulls along fantastic. It really does. I mean, I'll take it out for a spin tomorrow now and we'll see how. Uh, see how it goes then okay folks D-Day is upon us it's now 6 a.m. and I am taking this van on a 50 kilometer journey into work uh, a van that I have done more mechanical work on than I've done on any other vehicle in the past so I uh, can't say I'm not a little bit apprehensive but that said, I'm cautiously optimistic. One of the things I'm curious about is actually to see what the heaters are like because these uh, TDI engines they don't uh, they don't generate as much heat as the um, as the older uh, uh, the older uh, mechanical uh, injected engines. So, um, and mind you, it's not a it's not a particularly cold morning out, but. Nice bit of pull. 
it's not a it's not what you would call fast now I mean let's not go overboard I mean even at 120 horsepower if that's roughly what it is because of the modifications I've done it's still a van that weighs two tons and it's, it's aerodynamic as a block of flats like you know so it's not you know you're not going to get massive uh, massive speed out of it but um, if I were to take it onto a motorway, which I'm going to later on when I'm on the way home, I'm actually going to, I'm going to drive it on the motorway. Um, you know, I could actually do the 120k. Now, bearing in mind, I've done nothing on the suspension and uh, nothing on the brakes and nothing on the steering, aside from changing the bushes and ball joints in the past and all that kind of thing. It's, uh, you know, it's still a 1987 Volkswagen van, so you kind of, you want to use your, your own best judgment when you decide to do 120 kilometers an hour in this. Um, like, there's more than just the, en the engine that stopped me from doing it a lot of the time. Um, you know, if you have any sort of crosswind, the, the high top roof on this uh, catches the crosswind like the sail and you'll end up in the wrong lane, even at 100k. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, on a, a nice calm day like it is today, uh, 120k should be achieved, well at least for a short while. So, uh, yeah, I'll bring you back in a little bit later in the journey. The heaters are starting to come to life now. To be honest with you, they are ta definitely taking a lot, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a lot longer to heat up than they would have done um, with the old engine, but uh, I can live with it, you know what I mean? They, they are heating up. As long as the engine doesn't overheat, that's what I'm watching for now. And uh, certainly I'm not showing any signs of doing that. It seems quite happy actually. One of the uh, one of the guys in the uh, car club who uh, has a um, same basic engine and box setup uh, in a, a bay window bus as I do in this now. Um, I was having a discussion with him about the uh, the gearing and what it's like in fifth gear. Uh, and he was saying basically that when he puts it into fifth gear, it uh, dies on its arse and there's no pull in it because uh, it's below its uh, power band. Now, my experience with fifth, fifth gear now is I'm kind of in between the, the sort of the 70 and 80k mark at this moment in time in fifth gear. And if I want to accelerate, there is a bit of acceleration there. It is actually pulling through. So it's, um, and it's quite comfortable and happy to drive at this uh, at this RPM um, so I don't think I would need to do anything uh, I, I like I'm quite happy with the way it is now uh, first impressions I don't actually think um, the gearing is too tall for this engine now it might have been when it was uh, in its kind of original 90 horsepower format but um, at the, uh, the the kind of power rating it is now which I'd be interested to put it on a dyno but um, seems to be quite um, quite happy and uh, as I said there's just enough headroom to, um, to kind of uh, pull along um, in fifth gear like from say you know now I'm accelerating in fourth at the moment but yeah it's it's fine I'm happy with it actually it really it really does um, and even just with slight inclines and that as well too it's still pulling up and fine so uh, and I'd say on a motorway that'd be better again. Okay, so my impressions at this point in time, it's an absolute pleasure to drive. I would have been driving along at 80k before and the engine would have been revving hard. Now it's ticking over and it's doing its thing beautifully and oh, it's just gorgeous. It really is, it just transforms this van. comfortable and pleasant to drive as driving a T4 or, you know, any kind of uh, late 90s uh, VW. Um, and uh, one of the things I did, and amongst the other jobs, I, I actually overhauled the drum brakes on the back as well too. And to be honest with you, the brakes are fine. Um, like the, there's uh, new, new pads and uh, new pads and discs on the front. There's uh, all new shoes on the back. Um, I've changed the brake fluids. Uh, new handbrake cables, um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm confident in the brakes. As I said, I've done the suspension, uh, ball joints, and bushings as necessary. Uh, there's, there's, uh, 
bushes to go underneath the steering rack of these, uh, which is, uh, they're, um, they, they go soft over the years, and apparently it's one of the one of the things that's well worth doing is uh, upgrading them to urethane bushes, and I might well do that at some stage, because uh, it stops the uh, kind of um, wanderly, uh, wanderly wagon type thing, you know, so, um, yeah. One of the things I'm looking at here now at the moment is um, the uh, temperature. Is um, it's it's barely up there. I mean, I've been driving for about a good 20 minutes now, and it's definitely not getting near as hot as the old engine did. Now, um, whether that's because the uh, temperature that the, the the output that the ECU is giving for the gauge is uh, kind of conditioned differently or it's actually just not as hot. And personally I think it's just not as hot. Um, which is good because it means that when I'm driving up a, uh, a mountain pass in France or something like that in this and it's uh, you know it's on full boost for extended periods of time. There's still plenty of headroom in the cooling system to bring all those temperatures back down again. Um, this road is a little bit twistier now, actually, so uh, I think I'll probably leave it in fourth gear in this instance. This. Uh, journey I'm on, it's kind of, um, the roads are a bit more uh, sort of uh, rural, um, so I'm not kind of going on, don't overtake there man, Fuck idiot. Anyway, the, um, yeah, it, the, the, it's interesting because of the fact that the engine revs so much lower, and it's, it's, it, the modern TDI wants to be kind of around 1500 RPM and uh, the old uh, the old engine would have been kind of grumbling at that uh, at that RPM it was much more revy diesel and um, not gonna be wrong the AAZ was actually a nice engine all things considered it was um, it was just it didn't have uh, like the, it was um, it was frustrating to drive on motorways or on long journeys and that as well too because you were always revving it and the gearbox that was in the van was designed to take a 1.6 turbo diesel and was geared as such. So you were kind of, um, you know, sticking a 1.9 turbo diesel into it. You were, you were benefiting from the extra power and a, a less stressed engine because the 1.9 actually has a longer stroke. So uh, it was just, it seemed to be happier pulling a van around. Um, why VW ever put a 1.6 diesel in these, I will never understand. They, they were chronic about putting uh, underpowered engines in vehicles back in the uh, in the 80s and actually in the past as well too. But uh, yeah, um, they've most definitely gone away from that now. But, uh, as I said before, I'm to be honest with you, this is the best of both worlds. It's the later the later uh, TDI engine out uh, from the 90s, so not too much electronics, um, and it's in an old VW, um, because I'm not interested in modern VWs, to tell you the truth, I just am, I'm just not, like, um, they don't do anything for me. Um, you know, you could, you could offer me a, a R32 Golf with all the trimmings, or you could offer me a 1974 Volkswagen bus, I take the 1974 Volkswagen bus any day of the week. That's just me. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just I'm leaving the van in fourth gear here now. But uh, the engine is really uh, it's really turning slowly. It's it's kind of um, you know there's lots of low down grunt in it. And uh, I can see kind of what people were saying about the uh, the. TDI engines that the you know the, the power band is much lower in the rev range it really is and you don't kind of notice it when you're driving a TDI a, a modern TDI car and uh, because you know it's a completely different car but when you take that drivetrain and put it in something like this 
you do start to notice it then. And uh, so, so the kind of the whole driving experience is, has changed completely. Like I'm doing sort of 50k now in fourth gear, and the engine is ticking over, and it's still plenty of pull. Like you know, the, the other end, the AZ would be dying on its arse if I was doing this to it. Okay, I'm pulling back into the same place I always seem to end up uh, pulling into when I'm uh, when I'm doing a not to 60 test, and I think it'd be rude not to. Kind of have to do it. It's not like the engine's not broken in, folks. So you can all relax, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you um, Trevor, who owns a 1970s VW camper van, a bay window bus, and he has got an AFN engine in it with a um, uh, with the flipped Passat gearbox uh, that I have. So um, he sent me some fo uh, footage on WhatsApp and um, has um, given me permission to share this with you. So what's interesting to see now is how his van accelerates through the gears and how his van actually performs um, and uh, compared to mine. Now the AFN engine will be 110 horsepower from standard. Um, I believe mine would be probably uh, in or around that, maybe a little bit more because I've done the injectors and the remap and all that as well too. It's probably much of a muchness to be honest with you. But anyway, yeah, uh, have a look at this footage. Okay, how are you Ross? Uh, can we take it for a spin now? Get out into the road. There's nothing coming, so I'm going to get out in the road and stop. And go from there. Okay, dead start. Go. Second. Third. down in fifth. 
uh, the, the conversion kits that he, do, that he does are very uh, reasonable and uh, very well engineered. Um, Brickworks, always fantastic. Um, Simon Baxter is the name, uh, the name behind uh, Brickworks, but they're a big enough shop. Um, I buy most stuff for the T25 from Brickworks. Um, and uh, then uh, VWSpares.ie as well too, uh, they're in Ireland. Um, and uh, I've always found them very helpful, uh, very reasonably priced. Um, and they, they basically do anything for a classic VW, be it a Carmen Ghia or a T25. So you're, uh, you know, they're a real one-stop shop. Just at the moment I was passing the cyclist, there was a truck on the other side, so I had to hit the brakes, kind of. Anyway, uh, yeah, and, um, let me see, who else am I, who else am I forgetting? Hmm. Hard braking, the uh, oil pressure light uh, came on for a split second there, so uh, I need to check my oil levels. I'm nearly there anyway. Um, Okay, I'm just uh, contemplating the um, that that uh, oil pressure light showing up. Uh, I'm thinking um, the 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 engine sits on a, uh, sitting on a kind of a forward slope. Uh, now, one of the uh, one of the things um, that uh, I do need to look at is the uh, the dipstick um, because. At the moment, it's uh, it's not registering anything, even though I put four and a half liters in it when I was um, when I had the garage, the engine on the garage floor. Now, what I want to do is uh, I want to um, put four and a half liters in it uh, in the van again. So, what I'm going to do is, after a thousand uh, miles or so, I'm going to be changing the oil in this anyway because there was a lot of sludgy crap that I wanted to get out of it. Um, I think the previous owner made a lot of short journeys and just kind of sludged up the engine and gummed up the injectors and uh, diesel engines don't like short journeys only you need to get them out and get the uh, exhaust gas temperatures up burn the carbon off the heads and um, you know they're, they're much happier if you do that periodically modern diesels especially uh, with the that DPF carry on I could not be dealing with it that is the greatest load of shite that I've ever I've ever heard like you know I had a Toyota Aorus with a uh, particle filter that got clogged in it and luckily enough it was still under warranty uh, so I just brought it straight back to them but for Jesus sake man, I mean it's such a bloody pain in the face like that's one of the reasons I wouldn't have touched a modern diesel I mean all of that kind of uh, um, all that emissions control carry on I can do without it so uh, like my modern car is actually a hybrid so it's a petrol engine and um, but uh, I did a review on it there if you want to have a look at it actually it's uh, um, you may or may not be interested in it it's definitely aimed at a different uh, different market so uh, I'm just coming into the back of the airport now and um, I tell you what everything seems happy and I am certainly happy I'm delighted with how well this has performed it really has uh, uh, it really has impressed me situation I'll have a quick look when I, when I get out and just make sure there's not a pool of oil behind it but uh, we'll assess the situation after um, uh, after work and uh, see how uh, see how everything's holding up if there's anything that's kind of hanging on by a thread or whatever as well too but at this point I don't think there is I think everything is good so yeah okay so I'm uh, I'm on the way home now and um, I've been having a bit of a think about how the van drove while I've been at work today, uh, in amongst doing work as well too, believe it or not. Um, and it seems to me that it is a little bit uh, down on power, and I am sort of querying that in a sense. 
But what I'm also thinking as well too is, is I was saying at another point that you have to drive it differently. So I suppose the thing about it is, is that it's the power's all down low and me revving the engine out, it just takes the turbo out of, out of the equation because the turbo is off, uh, the turbo is over speed and uh, the, the wastegate's open at that rate. So you're um, kind of losing out on the uh, performance by not keeping the revs down low. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm, I'm taking it onto the motorway now and I'm going to see how it actually uh, performs on the motorway and uh, get a better idea there. Um, I'd be, uh, to be honest with you, my impressions are it pulls really well in the low gears. I mean, like you, you're staying at first and second gear and off the mark, it, it goes really, really well. But it's when you get into, when you go from third to fourth, there's a huge gap. And what happens there is the fact that because there's a huge gap, you're, you're kind of, you know, you're losing a lot of energy there. And um, I think that's what's, uh, that's kind of what's happening. But um, let's see how it performs on the motorway anyway. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not all that bothered. If this if this van turns out to be a long-legged cruiser, uh, then that's kind of all right, you know? I mean, it's kind of what I uh, would like from it, in a sense. That's not to say I don't drive it on country roads or anything like that, uh, but, um, you know, if it was comfortable on motorways, great, well and good, and I think it will be. I mean, there's uh, 60, uh, 60 kilometers an hour in fourth gear, and it's, um, I mean, the engine's, probably doing 1500 rpm the old engine would have been doing two and a half thousand rpm in fourth gear at this uh, at this speed so easily two and a half not more to be honest with you but see there's a nice there's a i'm up to 80 already there now i mean there's a, there's a nice bit of pickup uh, just in that short space of time so let's uh get out into the middle lane here and get past this truck There's 100k now. There's fifth. So I'm in fifth gear now at 100k. Let's be honest with you, it's not bad. I mean, I'm I'm quite pleased with how it drives. It's just, I suppose, if I'm focusing on the not 60 time, it is abysmal. I mean, it's actually quite. Uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go so far as to say disheartened, but I was hoping for more. That's why I was kind of, it was a sort of a bemused laugh I gave at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, 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 not the 60 run. But, um, and here I am now on a motorway. Now I'm doing 100k because the, that's the speed limit on this particular road. But it'll open out now, we'll get onto a stretch that's 120k, and I'll bring it back in and we'll see how we're going there. Just, um, I'm kind of along behind the truck here now at the moment before I got onto that stretch where the, where the limit's 120k and I'm doing 80k and my foot is literally just resting on the accelerator just to keep the van moving. I mean, it's barely, uh, I've got barely any input into the uh, into the engine, so there's plenty of headroom to kind of get a shift on, and that's in fifth gear now. So, uh, I'm expecting the fuel economy to be much better in this van now. I'd like to be into the 40s anyway. I was kind of down uh, 29, 30 miles to the gallon with the AAZ engine. So there's my foot flat to the floor. And it is, it is picking up now. I mean, and I'm up a slight incline here on the motorway and it, it's starting to pick up. Okay, the motorway is just starting to open out now to a place where we can do 120K. So I'm at 110 now. 120K for those of you in, um, uh, Imperial is uh, 75 miles an hour, uh, but my uh, speedometer in this van is actually in kilometers. I converted it a while back. There we go. That's 120k now, and it's just Jesus, it's perfect. Yeah, it probably takes a little bit longer to get there than a. Uh, Probably an unladen T5 or something like that, you know. But I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of weight in this van. It, it's 1.9 tons, so uh, I mean, that's that's a serious weight. Um, so uh, you have to bear that in mind, really. 
switch. I'm going to get off the motorway. I, I don't really want to go through the toll plaza and, and uh, also as well too. It's um, uh, just better road actually just to try everything out on. I mean, I can do. I, I know I can do the motorway, the motorway driving now, and really happy with that. So. Um, yeah, sure, look, I think to be honest with you, we'll leave it there and we'll pick it up in a future video. You kind of get the idea. I'm really happy with how it drives. A little bit underwhelmed by the power output, but um, I suppose it's to be expected. With uh, It's still a 1997 engine um, pulling a two-ton van around. Okay, fair enough, I've remapped the ECU and put larger injectors in. But um, it was never going to be a race car, but to be honest with you, it's comfortable to drive and I'm... I'm happy with that and it performs on the motorway as well too so um yeah look thanks for watching and um i'll keep you updated on future progress with this and my other vehicles and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some of those road tests done over the next while i'd say they'll be probably done over the after the 20th of july as well too so um yeah see you soon